Good morning. Good morning. I see someone already here. <coughs> How are you this morning? How are you feeling? So just type uh, good morning when you're here and you can let us know how you're feeling. It's almost two weeks now that uh, we're doing the morning community, so... Yeah, tomorrow will be the second week. Yes. We'll come, we'll complete the, we complete the second week tomorrow. Yes. My God, the time is flying. Good morning. <sighs> okay, fine. Do you feel any shift already? Anything that uh, you have noticed that has changed? Do you get any insights? How do you follow your challenges today? Do you keep your tracker? I I do every day and when I uh, tick everything, like for example, to make my meditation, visualization, affirmations, uh, exercise a day, when I do this, I feel so much better. And uh, yeah, it's giving me the fulfillment of the day. So you might have, you do the tracker. I do the to-do list. To-do list. Yes, like uh, like Barbara was uh, saying, and uh, I do usually every night before going to bed. I mean, even earlier than this, uh, before ten usually. And uh, yes, I like also to tick everything that I have done. But sometimes, uh, you know, you might feel also sometimes a little bit overwhelmed doing this. With the with to-do list, yes, and if you are. Um, if you want to get the maximum and if you write many things in to-do list and if you don't make most of them and you focus on this which you don't uh, finish, of course you will feel overwhelmed. But if you focus on this which you finish, you can yes. make this. <laughs> Thank you, Clement. Yes. And um, you know what is good? Uh, I was obsessed like four or five years ago with self-development i was my god i was waking up with this kind of videos i was reading books i was doing all the time seminar after seminar after seminar and i said what what is going on with me why i'm not moving why I even i i don't i don't feel happy what is going on i supposed to be more happy I'm supposed to be more successful i supposed to be everything more and more how the people say on the stage you can do it no matter what you know, after, to be honest, I realized this is a blah, blah, BS stories. You can do it no matter what. This, uh, that's not true, in my opinion. Uh, you need to award yourself. And it's okay not to do the things sometime. You cannot live all the time with this. Because what happened with me, instead to bring me to my happiness, actually bring me back. So I become more grumpy, I become to, uh, to be more annoyed and to think that I know everything and things like this. It's okay to award yourself, it's okay to buy chocolate, not to, to blame yourself, to say, wait, I don't want to do this today, I don't want to do Zoom, I don't want to go to the seminar or I don't want to, to listen some. I just want to stay at home, listening, uh, watching movie, reading a book, not self-development. Reading a book I want to read, for example, nice book. I want to go to the sea on my own, not to think for this. I, I want to call a friend of mine just to talk for bushes, you know, just just to talk like this, just to empty my mind. Because all the time doing this, doing this, doing this is too much. Yeah, I think a great example is like when you want to uh, start to lose weight or if you want to like uh, implement a more healthy lifestyle, you know, at the beginning you will say, okay, uh, I would cut off all sugar. Uh, I would go five times a week in the gym. I would do this. I would do that. And you do this for one week, two weeks, and then after you give up, you know, because there is no like uh, reward for yourself. Uh, and it's too much. It's too much for yourself. And now we can see there is all of this like new diet or so like you, you do the diet for the whole week and let, in the weekend, let's say you get something like like a pizza or something for, you know, to reward yourself. So what we're saying here is that, yes, what will show the results actually is the consistency, you know? So be consistent 
but reward yourself in the way on the journey, you know, so that you don't give up. So that's that. That's what we wanted to talk. Can about. you imagine a child which you only bring him to school and the child have a homework, school homework, school homework. He he doesn't he or she they don't go to play they don't go to the playground they don't see their friends they don't watch cartoons they watch only these kind of uh, movies for education for the school what kind of child is gonna grow up do you think he's gonna grow up one uh, happy child do you think this person is gonna become a happy person or it's gonna become a person which know everything but um, will become annoyed and will become with with a big ego that, uh, you know, I know everything. And um, I don't think we'll be happy. We need this kind of uh, entertainment and just just get just get crazy. Go jump on Batuta or something. Just be a child. In Insight, we also talk, uh, we talk about the basic self, actually. It's like one part of yourself that uh, we call like the body, you know, that like every pleasure, you know. And it's like a children. It really, you know, is has a lot of uh, persistency, you know, like uh, children that you will say, oh, you, tomorrow you will go uh, to the sea, you know, it will not give up on this, you know, it will remind you all the time. And we say that this part of yourself actually is has a great power, you know, that's the that's the part of yourself that help you to keep your commitment, you know, to, to give you this power, this energy to do it. So, and this part, you need to feed it, you need to reward it. And that's uh, that's what we just say, like, you know, just sometime watch a movie, you know, you can say, OK, I will do this all this week. But maybe on Saturday night, I will watch a movie. For example, oh. me after Inside Seminar, uh, when we were being to Inside, I, th I think it was four years ago. <coughs> the basic self, when they talk about the basic self, open so much. So sometimes my basic self is all day with me, it doesn't leave me alone. So I get crazy, and even when we have a serious conversations with other people, I'm like a baby. Since I feel, you know, <laughs> that annoy them. But yeah, for me, there's no problem to go in inside the, the, the mall here in Paphos and to dance in the middle of the mall. You know, I, I, just to get crazy. This is how I can go with my energy. But most of you, uh, most of you, most of us, and me before, I was like. Uh, watching around what the people will see me, how they will see me, how they will accept me. I, I I don't care. I mean, I care how I will feel and how I accept myself first. Okay, so... My love, do you want to say who is our guest today? Yes. <laughs> so today uh, we have with us uh, Ofer Wesman. So you met you met him last week. And let me bring him. And in offer is an insight facilitator and he's coming often also in Cyprus uh, to help us, uh, to support us for oh, our he's workshop. Great, he's great support. Yes, for our workshops, inside, inside seminars. And uh, today he will talk about uh, getting what, we, what you want and uh, contesting uh, our limiting beliefs. So offer, thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be with you, Calimera. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm, so, practicing, I'm practicing my languages. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for being with us because we know you are very busy with the grad series you're doing for Israel and plus with organizing the World Wild Inside Seminar, which we have a global online now this week. Thank you for being with us. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, just before we start, you know, I was listening to what you shared, Krasi, and it reminded me a very important uh, rule about, uh, you know, our development, personal growth. Uh, you know, we have like uh, three, three perspectives of us, you know, the spiritual, the mental and the physical or emotional. And uh, one of the rules is that if one of those is rushing forward and we leave something behind we will never be okay it it doesn't work you know somebody who is going to say i'm going to sit on the in a, in a cave and only do spiritual things you know eventually he will die of hunger because he's not taking care of his physical being 
And the same goes with the mental, you know. So if you need sometimes to do something for your mind, which is not spiritual, that's great. Because if you let this go, it will pull you back. It will like hold you back. So that's, you know, because you were sharing about, you know, doing a lot of spiritual thing. And then you said, you know, just read a reg regular book or just go out to nature and enjoy nature and let your body, uh, you know, uh, catch up with your general feeling of balance because that's the that's the point the key is balance believe me this is how i feel before even i was going like two years uh, in my meditation uh it's called vipassana for 15 days which i was meditating 16 hours a day and i was expecting some big I, I'm, I'm going to the baby sorry So offer. So uh, today we will be talking about getting what we what we want and contesting our limiting belief and saying uh, what are the blocks uh, from getting what we want. So right. my first question is: Do you believe we can get everything we want? Well, yes, in a way, but no, in another way. Um, you know, in in one of the seminars, I remember the facilitator said. You know, she said, you can get everything you want, but you cannot get everything you want. Which means, uh, you know, if, if we take each little thing that we want and we put our energy into it and our commitment and we do the cycle of manifestation like we learn, uh, we, we will get there. But a lot of times the problem is that we have so many things on our list that we want. And we will talk later about how to differentiate those, uh, but we cannot have them all at the same time. You know, sometimes there are uh, limitations to that. So, you know, before we go into that, I suggest that you take a piece of paper and just jot down, write down a list of the things that you want. Just take two minutes to write down a quick list of everything that you feel that you want. Just don't think about possibility. Is it reasonable or not? Just write it down. Like I want a new car, or I want to be rich, or I want a uh, vacation, or I want this uh, corona to be over, or uh, um, I want to see my children, I want to go sailing. Anything that you feel that you want. And you can continue with that later, but you know, let's stop for now. So you have a list, right? So wh when you when you look at this list, um, one of the things that is obvious that uh, that blocks us from having what we want is the way that we word what we want, how clear we are about what we want. Because if I say I want a million dollars, that's a very clear want a very clear goal but if i say i want lots of money that's a that's a little more vague what is lots of money what will be enough for me to know that i got what i want so one one lesson from looking at this list is to say this is not clear enough let me let me be more specific because if we are not specific then we don't know even if this comes to us we will probably not recognize that this is what I wanted. And uh, another one is, um, you know, that there may be conflicting points on this list. So, you know, let's say I, I say to myself, um, I want to buy a Ferrari. Okay, this is one of the things on my list. And the other one is, I don't want to owe money to anybody. So, you know, if you're like me, if I have to buy a Ferrari, if I go to buy a Ferrari, I probably need to take out a loan and I will owe money to the bank, right? So here you may, I have two conflicting wants on my list. You know, to take it to personal example, you know, I want to live in Miami with my son, but I also want to be in Israel with my grandchildren. So, you know, I, I cannot keep these two in my list and be happy. I need to either re realize that I will have to give one of them up 
or try to find a way to have both, which is which is a possibility, but just leaving them both at the same time is is confusing to my basic self, you know, so what do I want more? And whenever I have those two conflicting ones and I focus on one of them, the other one is sitting on my soldier and say, wait, wait a second, what do you mean live in Miami? But you want to live in Israel. And then I say, okay, I want to be with my children. So the other one says, wait, wait a second, you want to be in Miami. So in order not to confuse myself, I have to be more specific with my list and I have to prevent having conflicts between the ones that uh, that I want, basically. Uh, there is always an or, or a end. You know, I can have this and this, or I can have this or this. So I have to be, you know, uh, conscious and aware if some of them must, you know, can come together and some of them don't. And then make a prioritization or say to myself, okay, we'll come to that basically later. Uh, both Israel and Miami, in the basis of them, have the same want, and that's to be close to my children. So when I go to that level, then I can think of another solution, okay? So I can be close to my children with Zoom, or, you know, wherever I am, I can have some way of being also close to the other side. So that, that's that's part of the lesson. And what about when there is no conflict? That's an interesting one, because when there is no conflict, let's say that I focus now on something very specific that I want. Okay, so um, we will, we will uh, while, while we talk about this, you can kind of look at your or notes of the list that you wrote, and you can write yourself notes next to it, because we will now touch on many blocks, many ways that I can block myself from having uh, what I want. Okay, so the first question, which is really important, is uh, why do I want this? Okay, why? For some of us, things that we want and we put on the list are things that somebody told me that I should want or that I learned in my, in my upbringing that this is a good thing to have. So, you know, we kind of get up in the morning and we, it, it's in our mind that we should want this or we should want that. So, uh, you know, if, if I don't have the why, if it's something that somebody told me, I'll give you an example. I used to try and quit smoking because people told me it's not healthy. It wasn't something that came from the inside. It was something that came from the outside. Okay. People told me that it smells bad. It's not healthy. It's not good for other people. All of these, these were external reasons that I didn't really buy. It wasn't my reason. So I tried to stop and I start again and I tried to stop and I, you know, quit three times. And then at some point in Bal, my wife and I were sitting in the, on the, before we went to the United States on a trip and we said to each other, maybe we should quit just because we want to quit because it's not good for us anymore. You know, it was like suddenly it came from the inside and I did that and we quit. I didn't gain weight, I didn't get crazy, I did nothing. It was because it was a real decision that came from inside of me, it came from my heart. So my, my whole being was ready to accept that and not something that I was not sure because somebody else told me that I should do that. So the why is very important because the why is the energy that, that pushes me in the direction of what I want. And if the energy is not there, if they don't have the drive, then it will not happen. So the other thing that relates to that is confusing between symbols and experiences. We talk about it many times in the seminar. You know, do you want a lot of money? Well, most people will say, yes, I want a lot of money. Okay, so what experience are you looking for? What is the experience that money will give you? The experience can be abundance or just a feeling of abundance. I want a lot of money because I want to feel abundant. I want a lot of money because I want to feel secure. 
I want a lot of money because I want to feel powerful. Uh, I want a lot of money because I want to feel respected. So many times you get the symbol and you wonder why you feel you need more of that symbol. Some people can be very rich and they want more money. Why is that? Because they didn't get the experience. They were focusing on the symbol. They got the symbol. But because they were not what drives them was the want for the symbol and not the realization of the experience that we were looking for. And if we do know what the experience is, we can experience it right now. You know, give you an example from my life. I realized at some point I want a yacht. Why do I want a yacht? Because I want to be on the, in the yacht and sail and feel peaceful. That's true and that's great. And now I have a yacht and I sail and I feel peaceful. But the biggest lesson that I had was that if I close my eyes, take a deep breath, imagine myself that I'm in the sanctuary, which is something we do in the seminar, I will be peaceful, right? So I can have peaceful without having the symbol. There's nothing wrong with having the symbol, by the way. Money buys me a lot of good stuff. But it is not the purpose. It is a tool, and it is a tool for getting other things that I enjoy. But if I am not in the experience, no matter how much money I will have, will not do it for me. You know, you can, one of the seminars as facilitators, one told me, you cannot have enough of something you don't really need. That was a really clever thought. You cannot have enough of something you don't really need. So if it's something that is not really what we want, which is the experience, it will never be enough. And another thing that I want to share with you is based on the fact that we can have the experience in any moment, is a quote that I really like. I will read it out to you. The universe does not give us what we want. It gives us who we are. Think about it. If you are happy, if you are in your being happy, you don't need any symbol to make you happy. That's, that's what the universe gives you. That's, that's how you are. So if you choose the experience, and, and the experience is a choice, happiness is a choice, peace is a choice, surrender is a choice, forgiveness is a choice. So if you choose the experience, your life will be that. Okay, let's uh, go on. Another block is a level of commitment. So when I go out, for getting what I want, how important is it for me? You know, the rule is simple. Low commitment, less results. That's, that's, that's the way it is. So if I'm sitting there saying to myself, I want a lot of money, but I'm not committed, uh, it will probably not happen, you know. Even if somebody will come to me and say, hey, listen, there is a great job that you can have. It's 12 hours a day, but, you know, you can have a lot of money and quickly, uh, you know, if I'm not committed, I will say, no, I'd rather sit in the house and read a book. Then, you know, this opportunity will pass by. Okay, another thing, how big is your dream? So a small dream really is not mobilizing my energy, right? So if I just, you know, I want something small, there is no excitement. So I need to mobilize my energy. So in order to do that, I need to have a dream that is big enough to mobilize my three selves. You know, my basic self will say, yeah, this is worth going for. But it's not too big. Because if it's too big, my basic self may be, and that's because of limitations that we'll talk about later, my beliefs and my judgments. But if it's too big, 
my basic self may say, hey, hey, wait, you know, this is too much. You know, I, I, I don't, I cannot perceive this. Many people, if you tell them, uh, you know, think about $10 million. Okay, and I'm saying it because I'm one of those people, you know, I cannot think about $10 million. I cannot perceive it in my mind. So my limitation will be whatever I can perceive in my mind. As I said, it's the balance of my spiritual and mental and emotional. They all have to be together. So if my mind, my mental cannot perceive what I will be doing with $10 million, my basic self and my, my, you know, my inspiration and my intuition are not going to bring me there. there there's no you know they will pull me back they will say wait 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 a second 10 million dollars for me for instance i will think of all the negative things that will come up with the 10 million dollars okay now i have too much money i have too much responsibility who is going to take care of the yacht that i bought now which is like two million dollar yacht i need a crew of 12 people you know all of these things start coming up so the dream has to be big enough for me to mobilize my energy and at the same time you know not too big not to scare my being and make it impossible in my mind okay so we say think about something that is 70 percent at least 70 percent possible that you can realize that you can do this you can kind of have it and it will be okay for you and then start with micro steps we talked about it in this morning community many times start doing it like one step at a time small steps taken consistently in the direction of what you want to get but that's that's one we talked about uh, focusing on the symbols as opposed to focusing on the intention. Okay, there is another place where our focusing uh, sometimes goes to the wrong place. And that is focusing on the method instead of focusing on the intention. Okay. So if you, if you look at the, at the list of things you want, I think that automatically for any of those, you know, you know, our natural, natural tendency is when I think about something I want, my mind goes to my database of possible methods. You know, it's like a, it's like a mental list of steps. In order to get there, I need to do A, B, C, D. Like a project starts building up in my mind. Okay, but it's usually one method that is in my database because somebody told me that this is the way you do it you know so let's say if i think about going to cyprus automatically my method is taking a plane and flying uh, so if i don't have money to take a plane and fly i will say to myself maybe i cannot go to cyprus i have to collect money and only then i can go to cyprus but this is wrong this is wrong because i am focusing on the method and because the method is not available i say to myself okay so i need to wait until the method will be available if i will focus on my intention my intention is to go to cyprus then and stay focused with a clear intention then what will happen is that ideas will come up either they will come up internally because I'm a creative person, so we, our mind can build new ideas as long as it's not stuck in the old ones. And the other possibility is that when I tell other people, you know, I want to get to Cyprus and I don't have money, they will give me ideas because their methods in their minds, or maybe they are more creative than me, so their methods are different. And then somebody will say, hey, listen, uh, you can put a little note in the marina and say, I want to go to Cyprus. Is anybody sailing there? And somebody maybe will invite you, you know? And I, when I go to the marina, I see a lot of notes like this. I'm a young soldier. I can cook. I can clean if anybody was willing to take me to Europe on the boat. Well, great idea. So just notice when you are crossing out something you want 
because you're not aware of a method or because the method is not clear to you. Just stay, I don't care, I don't know how, but this is something I want. And, you know, I'm putting it, putting it to the universe, putting it in the light. I'm saying, you know, I invite my creativity to come up with ideas. Don't be attached because that's the other problem. If you get too attached, okay, and you don't have it yet, then you're focusing on the fact that I don't have it yet. This is something I want and it's still don't here. This is something I want and it's still not here. And this energy is a closing energy. It's not here, I get distracted, I get confused, I get, you know, I get upset, right? So another little rule is choose what you have so you can have what you choose. What does it actually mean? If I'm focusing on what I don't have, and I don't accept the fact that what I have is something that I brought to my life, and I can be grateful for that, then I don't have the ability to go out and have something new. So first I have to kind of be okay with what I have. Relax, not be in self-judgment. And say, okay, what I have is good. Now what do I want to have more? Instead of saying, I'm in a shitty place, and then what I feel is shit. And from that place, it's very difficult to go out and have more. Because our energy is not pushing us out there. So in general, uh, these, these were some tools that, uh, that I had in mind in terms of blocks. But we didn't speak about the biggest, biggest block. And that's, you know, uh, the fact that we are limited by our beliefs and our judgments about what is possible. So uh, at any time that we have something that we want, if there is another, first of all, there may be a belief regarding that. Okay, let's talk about beliefs with regard to money. If I believe that money is too much responsibility or that money uh, doesn't come easy, my parents, they, they used to tell me, um, they used to say, money doesn't grow on trees. Did you ever hear that? Money doesn't grow. When I wanted money, they said, money doesn't go on trees. So what actually did I pick up from that? I picked up the notion that money requires hard work. So, you know, for me, I always said to myself, well, money requires hard work. And if I'm lazy or if I have other things in mind and I don't like to work hard, but at the same time I want money, I have, you know, a conf conflict between those beliefs. And, you know, the belief that I want to be rich or I can be rich and the belief that money requires hard work and I don't want to work hard. And there were others, you know, I remember looking at my grandfather who was a merchant and he had a store and, uh, you know, he, he sometimes used to say, you know, uh, merchants are not, um, how do you say it, honest. They are, they're just, you know, they're not honest. They're trying to steal money from the customers, you know, in any way they can. So they will kind of raise the price and, you know, do these things in order to get more money. And as a child, I really wanted to be an honest person. And, you know, my notion of honesty was to figure out exactly how much I want to make profit. And then I will sell the, the item at the price that allows me a reasonable or fair. I, I wanted to play fair in the market a fair profit okay so guess what happened i created the business was beautiful everybody was hugging me when they saw me on the street because my prices were fair and then i went bankrupt but <laughs> but you know the 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 thing is that my um my belief about what business is about or how business should operate 
was in the way of me succeeding in my business. You know, I, I felt that uncomfortable to ask for more money. How many of you in the group, when you sell your services, let's say you are like doing massages or something like that, when you sell your services, you feel uncomfortable asking for what you think you deserve, okay? I think that many people are at that point. I was there. I was in a, in a job and, you know, I was always feeling that I get what I deserve. I and, think, right, Krasi? I think many people can relate with this. I'm one of them. Honestly. Yeah, okay, okay. So, um, so you know, the, the point is that only when I realized that I am asking for less than what I deserve was the break point where I could move from that job to the next one. Because I knew when I go to the next one, the boss, you know, the interview will ask me, how much do you expect to get? And if I say whatever I have, then what's the point, you know? So I said to myself, well, when I go to this interview, I deserve to get double of what I'm getting now. And I deserve to get a car and I deserve to get this and that. And this is how I went into the interview and I got everything I wanted. Okay. So, so now once you get that, be careful not to judge yourself in hindsight for not asking for it before, because then you are going into the loop of self judgment again. You know, once you learn something new, don't judge yourself for not knowing it. That's the beautiful beauty about learning something new and being open. Because another limiting belief is there is nothing new or I'm too old to learn something new. So, you know, that's, uh, that, that's kind of the point about contesting beliefs. Sometimes there are beliefs that are, um, well, Clementine, you, you, you know what I mean, right? About, you know, how beliefs are kind of getting in and, and playing games with us. Yes. Do you have any tips how to contest these beliefs? Any way of contesting them? Um, yeah. So one way uh, is one way of contesting a belief that I have would be to find evidence to the opposite but but make a conscious a conscious decision to find evidence to on the opposite so what i mean is because my mind is designed to prove that my beliefs are true because this is the way we operate in general so rather than going out there in life and saying to myself oh here is evidence that my belief is true here is evidence that my belief is true is to uh, make a conscious decision that I want to find evidence to the contrary. Now, it will be difficult in, to begin with, but once I found one such evidence, my belief became a little weaker. And if I find another such evidence, it will become a little weaker. And at some point, maybe my belief will be neutral. It will be, okay, maybe money doesn't go on grow on trees, and I found evidence that sometimes when I walk under the tree, I find money. So I don't have to climb the tree in order to get it. Okay, I don't have to work hard in order to get the money. I can just enjoy it when it comes to me. You know, ask people how many of they believe that the universe is there to give them as much money as they can have. Ah, this is an interesting belief. Is the universe there? The purpose of the universe is to give me as much money as I can have. So what do I need to do? I need to be ready in my being to have more money, to be abundant. I have to have the feeling of abundance. And when I am abundance, you know, you remember, it's like be, do, have as opposed to I'll have and then I'll do and then I'll be, right? Okay, so if I have this belief that the universe is waiting to give me money and I feel that I'm abundant because I choose what I have in order to have what I choose, which means I feel okay with what I have now 
and I'm ready to receive more, then from that standpoint, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, from that point, I will get money. And I have, I have examples that I tell people in the seminar, people don't believe that it's true, but I'm telling you, it's true. I got money from the universe in ways that you cannot imagine. Why? Because I had a clear intention to do something. I didn't know where the money is coming from, but I, but in Bal, I, I, I was about to give up and in Bal reminded me and she said to me, you remember what they said in the seminar, keep the intention, the method will show up and suddenly the money came, you know? So that's, if you don't believe me, then it's fine. But then you stay with what you have. Can you tell us the story, please? I love this story. The story, okay. Uh, I got an invitation to go for seven, eight days on a yacht for a self-awareness seminar and team building on a boat in the Caribbean islands. It required like $7,000 for me and Inbal to do it together. I was about for close to my 50th birthday. <clears throat> but, you know, I was still uh, like divorced. I had payments, uh, alimony and all of that. And I told Inbal, there is no way that we can afford it. So I'm not doing it. And Inbal told me, this is your birthday. You know, buy yourself a present. So I said, but we don't have the money. She said, yeah, you, you will have the money. Just do it. So I signed up and uh, the month that I had to send the money to the United States, I remember at that time it was $7,000. By that month, I got a telephone call from somebody I was doing a project for in the municipality, a programming project. And this woman, she was my boss, uh, my uh, employer. She said, I need you to give me a receipt. You take out, you know, a, a bill for for 21,000 shekel, which was exactly $7,000. Take it out now. I said, wait, but I didn't do any work. You know, I, I wasn't used to be paid in advance. You know, no, no, no. She said, you have to give it the receipt now and I will give you the money because if we don't use it until the end of the year, we're going to lose the budget. So I said, okay, I gave her a receipt. I got 21,000 shekel. I sent $7,000 to the United States and everybody was happy. And I said, what do you want me to do for this money? She said, don't worry, next year, we will tell you, you know, you will do the hours next year for, for that money. And unfortunately, she passed away at the end of the year and uh, they never asked me to do anything because the project was discontinued. So, you know, it's not nice that it ended this way for her, but for me, the lesson was just stay open, have a clear intention, stay open, things will come. The moment you stop believing this, even if it comes to you, you pass, you let it pass by you because you don't believe that it's possible. And we cannot see what we don't believe. We cannot perceive of something we cannot believe. So that's that's one thing. <clears throat> so we said, uh, find evidence to the opposite. Another thing is question your belief. What if I am good at that? When did I try this the last time? You know, if I say to myself, I'm not good at something, I maybe change it. Say to myself, what if I'm good at it? I just didn't try it, you know, in the last two years because I thought I'm not. So maybe I should try, you know, what if I'm good at painting? This is one of my limiting beliefs. I don't perceive myself as being, you know, good paint in painting. So if I change that and I say, what if I can do that and enjoy it? So, you know, I, I don't care if I'm Van Gogh but I can paint and enjoy it. So let's do a little step. I will take a little thing and I will start a little painting and just say how it feels. Okay. So that's one way, just questioning my belief. And another way is visualizing. Visualizing, you know, I can visualize myself being in the Caribbean island on, an, on a boat, you know, so it becomes possible. If I don't, if I cannot visualize it, it's impossible for me to, to get it. 
because even if if it will be here in my on my plate i will not recognize it and another one is to watch myself talk you know if i say to myself i am not good at something instead of that say to myself up until now i was not good at this or to the best of my knowledge i'm not good at this but i'm willing to try whatever you know just we speak to ourselves like a parent or like a parrot is sitting here and speaking to us and what he's telling us is the limiting belief you're not good at this you're a failure at that you cannot achieve this whatever it is he is sitting here okay and so what i need to do is balance the the self-talk we call it self-talk because we talk to ourselves balance it with soul talk with it with the speaking of our heart or our soul you know so when the self-talk is saying you're not good at this the soul talk will say you can be good at anything just relax and start moving start doing go back to your heart accept yourself forgive yourself for the judgment you can be good at anything so if we started with you know you cannot have everything you want you can be good at anything you want sometimes it takes more practice but you can be good at anything you know and just just be there with this notion in your mind in your in your soul have this this beautiful this beautiful soul of yours relax and say to you you know you are not uh, you know a human being having a spiritual experience you're a spiritual being having a human experience as a human experience you have ego and judgments and all of that but as a spiritual being you can transcend beyond anything you can imagine you know so you know that's one thing about how we talk to ourselves um and as i said to finish uh just take a small step and see what happens just see what happens because a lot of times when we think about the big steps they are outside of our comfort zone if we take a small step and we see that nothing happened maybe a little something in my stomach you know a little but you know nothing happened you know i'm still safe i can take a little little step that's uh, one way of kind of breaking uh, that uh, comfort zone so i think uh, i think that's you know that's all i had to say <clears throat> you know when you when you when you start to talk i remember my focus uh, when I was going to the Bulgaria on the airport, I see the people on the laptop and, you know, I used to work as a barman and I say, my God, I really want to work online. I really want to get my laptop. I love traveling. I really want to get my laptop being independent, just go out in different mm -hmm. countries and work online. And I didn't focus on what I don't want, but I focus on what I wanted. And mm -hmm uh happen something like i get some online course and everything become true for me and what i wanted to say it's about uh you say what uh, I, i'm not good enough at okay uh, it, it's you're really right to 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 think and to focus on your self talk because and it's good to remember when you were a small child Okay, I was not good in writing, but with practice, I become so good that even I don't think about it. So mm -hmm. now I'm not good at, but when I practice, I will become so good that I will do it even without to think it. So this is yeah. not to judge ourselves, what I just write for myself. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. My love, you want to do meditation? Uh, no meditation, sorry, <laughs> uh, because I did meditation before. Uh, we will do now together the uh, graduation. Gratitude. This is how the, the Spanish people think. If, <laughs> if, if you have questions, uh, you can just uh, kind of ask Clementine and Crossy. They will, you know, they will uh, let me know. 
Um, uh, just, but every, sorry. Just what I want you to take from this meeting is that uh, the universe doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you are. Yes. So work on who you are in your being and you will have everything that you want. Not everything, not everything, but everything, one at a time, with patience and acceptance and gratitude. So now we can go to gratitude for what we have. Thank you. Thank you. My love, you're professional. <sighs> yes. <laughs> so I uh, just uh, take three deep breaths so you can place your hands on your heart. Count until five. Inhale. Hold on for five and exhale for five. The last one. I'm so thankful and grateful for my children. They are healthy, they're beautiful, they smile. I'm so thankful and grateful for my husband, his support, his caring, his love. I'm so thankful and grateful for this place, beautiful apartments with space and light so I can see the light, my children can run around. I'm so thankful and grateful for myself for being committed to wake up to do the work on myself. I'm so thankful and grateful for this morning community because I can expand myself, grow and working step by step. I'm so thankful and grateful for uh, all the coaches that come here as volunteer and share with us their knowledge, their skills, their awareness, so we can work on ourselves. I'm so thankful and grateful for the internet, for all the connection with our loved ones so we can see them and reach them in this time. I'm so thankful and grateful for the water, the electricity, because I can cook, I can clean, I can bath, I can take shower. I'm so thankful and grateful for waking up early and having the energy, the power to take care of myself, take care of my children. I'm so thankful and grateful for this beautiful island, for the sun, for the sky, for the sea. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So thank, thank you, you all of you. Thank you all for. <laughs> so make sure uh, we don't always have time in online, but make sure you go very deep also in your gratitude. You know, the more deep you get, the more aware you get also of the thing you have, and you make more place to have new thing in your life. So thank you, and have a, an amazing day, beautiful day. Uh, <laughs> a lot of smiles and, and a lot there, is of... an ex there is an exercise right yes we will uh, we will uh, publish we will, post, okay. we will post the uh, the exercise at 10 o'clock like usual so thank, thank you, you all so see you tomorrow bye <laughs>